So this video is going to pull together everything you need for your very first ERP sim manufacturing game. The uh, presumption here is that you've actually used SAP before. You've used ERP sim probably. <laughs> uh, if you're enrolled in my course, you have completed labs one through three and lab four of the ERP sim manufacturing game process. So a lot of this should be some review. It's more so getting you caught up with how to get started on that first day. If you're just randomly watching this video, hopefully this isn't the very first time you're logging on because it's going to assume quite a bit. The first part here, again, if you're in my class, I posted this for you, but otherwise you're going to want to watch all of these. This is all an overview of ERP Sim manufacturing game strategy. So this is kind of an overview of how it all works and then specific to each role. And there are a total of four different roles, production manager, sales manager, planner, analyst, those two are combined. I recommend, and I mean, it's beyond recommendation, everyone in your team should be watching these, should have watched these before the first game. Uh, but once you get into your role, you're gonna wanna come back and kind of visit these again. So uh, realize any video you've seen before this about the manufacturing game, that's also gonna play in role. So the, uh, the production process, the one that led into lab four is going to be helpful as well. Not just the production manager is going to want to watch those videos again. If you have not watched these, please don't start the ERP Sim game without this. It really talks about what it is you're going to be doing, what your role is going to be during that first game. So here it is on, uh, it's called ERP Sim Manufacturing Game Introduction and Roles. And if you're in my class, I have posted it for you. In addition, you should have the job aid. I highly recommend that you print it. As you will see here, switching between PDF and going to the SAP interface, the, the viewer, all that kind of stuff, it is uh, not necessarily an easy thing to do. <laughs> I recommend that you have it printed and write it in front of you so that when you need it, you have it. Uh, that's, yes, just print it out, okay? <laughs> it's two pages, front and back. So this is a job aid. Uh, if you are not familiar with it, it basically assumes you already know how to do all of it and just need a reminder. So it's general instructions for each one of these. More detailed information is included within the Manufacturing Game Participants Guide. And uh, there is additional information on the slides. If you are in my class, I have provided this for you. It is available for you. You can go and download them and look at them. Uh, if you are not in my class, talk to your instructor about getting them, but this gets into more information about each one of these. So it gets into the nitty gritty about some of the different options you can uh, make. So I'm just going to give you a kind of a quick overview here. Everyone in my class would have completed labs one through four. Uh, so you've already worked through some of these here uh, through the production process. Okay, um, logging on, you're going to get some sort of information from your instructor you will probably be told the server, the client, and the user ID or company code. If you have SAP installed uh, on your system, you will have something like this, and this is using UW Milwaukee as the host. The, I've sometimes had students say, well, I can't find the server, which one is it? Make sure you open all of this up so you can see these. Whichever ERP SIM server you have been assigned, that's the one you're going to be using. When you log on, it's going to ask you for the client, the user ID, and the password. Uh, the client itself is going to be provided by your instructor. If all they give you is a company code, what is being implied here is... I'm sure I have it. Nope, not that one. <laughs> that one. What's being implied here is the dollar sign is always your company letter. So if you were assigned company C or CC, your user ID will be something C1 to C9. All of those are available for your entire team. So when you are logging on, if you are not specifically given a user ID, it's pick your own. <laughs> uh, in my class, that's how it will be. I don't care which one you use. They all see the same thing. The temporary password is always ERPSIM, all caps. So that's uh, true for all of the different, uh, you know, whoever's watching this, that's true for everybody. So once you get logged on, and again, it will be specific to your class. Once you get logged on, you'll see this screen. If you're not seeing this, then you might be logged on to the wrong one. Uh, this is the general user menu. If you are using the web GUI, of course, it's gonna look a little different, but uh, you, if you're in my class, you've made it through the labs, you know what the difference is. Some things to be doing up front. 
and <laughs> I need to just leave this here, right? This is why you want it printed. <laughs> I'm demonstrating it. So within the production process, when you did lab four with me, you were given a, a specific uh, product to work with and a forecast. Within this, and I'm presuming you've watched the production uh, strategy videos, you know you're going to be producing more than one product. And it's up to you. There are 12 different products. They are listed on the job aid. There they are here. Uh, so this is the different products. You have six different products, two different sizes, the half kilogram and one kilogram. These are some minimum for minimums for them if you decide to change their uh, recipe. So what I recommend is, this is based on the textbook, based on the video, that you have a forecast of 37,000 for six different products. And following these instructions here, dollar sign, dollar sign, dash F, the select product group, I'm using company Z, ZZ-F, always in the second column, and are forecasted quantities in the second column. Uh, make sure you watch the video to understand why you're doing this, but just pick any of the six products to get started. So I have 37,000 for all six. Always press enter to make sure that the numbers are what you want. Click save, and then begin the production process. If you don't remember it, go back and watch the videos for Lab 4, the production process videos, all of those. But that's the very first step, and then you're running through the rest of production. And every time you restart, you're going to have to put in a forecast. There will never be a time that a new ERP Sim game will start where the last one ended. Uh, not in my class, at least. The other item, so that's the getting started for the production manager. Again, production manager, everything you did in Lab 4, that's what you're doing. Strategy-wise, watch the video about the production manager strategy. That's what you're doing. For the person who's doing the sales manager part, there's changing prices and uh, adding in marketing if you want. So I'm going to start over here. It's VK32. Remember, you, again, you have watched those videos, so I presume you know. You have three distribution channels, which means that you have two different prices per product. So I have 10 through 14 here. It's going to look for, so open the prices folder and distribution channel, click 10, 12, or 14. I'm doing 10 to 14. And then enter today's date. And you can always uh, use the, the calendar option for it. And then execute. And again, depending on what your theme is, it may look different for you. This is literally all the prices. It's distribution channel 10, 12, and 14 are all here. I am scrolling through using the mouse. Results may vary if you're using a laptop with a scroll mouse, an external scroll mouse. For some reason it doesn't work. Laptops for some reason are unpleasant with this. I don't know why. Uh, but just realize you can cursor through these as well one at a time. Uh, if you need to adjust the fields at all, it you know, works kind of like Excel. Don't mistake it for Excel. But this is the starting price for each one of these. Now, it, there's no label to go along with this, which means you are using the job aid. So dollar sign, dollar sign dash F01 or F11 here, ZZ dash F11. So that's the starting price for distribution channel 10 for one kilogram nut. This is my price. The, keep in mind that if you change the price, click save, it goes into effect the very next simulated day. So if it's before the simulation has started and you're changing price, it will go into effect round one, day one. If you change it round one, day two, it'll go into effect round one, day three. So it's always that next simulated day. Between rounds, everything carries over. So if it's round two, day 20, you click save, it'll go into effect round three, day one. So change all of these, make sure you click enter. I have had students do things like this and then they click save and they say, it won't sell, it just won't sell. Okay. Click enter, make sure that you realize that you are selling it for 54 million euros. <laughs> uh, you're not going to sell anything at that price. If you do need to back out without saving, it asks you, do you want to save the conditions first? Conditions means price. Do you want to save the conditions? No. But make sure you save to get it in place. The other option for the sales manager is this marketing expense. This is entirely up to you pricing and marketing, make sure you watch the video that talks about what it is that is your strategy. Each one of these is a some sort of promotion in each area. So put in a value. 
Uh, you know, watch the video to talk about the strategy part of it. Once you have the marketing you want to do in place, click save. Um, or clear if you want to get rid of it. Clear doesn't save, so make sure you click save after. There we go. And then there are reports as well. The reports, I mean, I can show you ZVA05, but I don't have the simulation running, so there's no sales in here. <laughs> I just realized it's showing around the day, the area. If you have questions about what those things look like, look at the participants guide. Uh, the slides also have a little bit more information, especially when it gets into some of the strategy um, with uh, get here. things like this. Woo. So setup time reduction and um, increasing capacity. There's more information in here about those. My textbook also has more information about it, so make sure you read through it. There's a whole strategy section. And yeah, oh, oh one more thing. The viewer. So once you have logged on to SAP here, you want to come over to the viewer uh, and log into it. And this is how you're going to keep track of what's happening with results. So you're going to change this to whichever server you've been assigned to, put in your client, the one the client you've been assigned to. And after you log on to SAP, your username and the password you changed it to. So not before. Uh, you want to make sure you do this first so that when you go here, um, you know, it's using what you logged in as. If you do it the other way around, you're using that temporary password and then you change it here and then there's, there's a mismatch, a credential mis mismatch. So use the viewer and uh, I'm going to off video <laughs> log into it because I don't want somebody watching this deciding, hey, I know, I'll log in as that as well. So I'm gonna log in just to kind of show you what's in here. And you've seen it, this in other videos as well. So uh, don't don't feel like, oh, he never showed us this. So it's in other videos. Uh, I definitely showed you it in the procurement or the, the uh, production process videos. So this is before the simulation has started. It says not started. Uh, results will be in here. So all the different teams that are competing, you can actually see, and it's ranked by company valuation. But the viewer will show, will show things like round one, day one. All right. Um, let's see here. I think that that's it for getting started. But remember, this all presumes that you have watched all of these videos and you are working with your team, you are together with your team. If you have no idea who your team is on this, that's a problem. If you have not contacted your team, that's a problem. Make sure you are talking. If you are not together, you are in one way or another communicating with each other in real time. Email is not fast enough. Text messages are not reliable enough. You need to be talking. In person is always better. If you have any questions, if you're in my class, send me an email and uh, otherwise contact your instructor.